Welcome back to First Year Undergraduate Microeconomics. We've been looking at the economics of international trade. In our last presentation, we looked at the economics of an import tariff. That was a tax on imports coming into a country. In this presentation, we want to look at a different type of restriction on imports, what's called an import quota. An import quota is where the government restricts the quantity of imports allowed into a country. So it's a quantity restriction on the level of imports. We're going to see that the effects of an import quota are very, very similar to the effects of a tax on imports or an import tariff. As always, our starting point is our small country assumption, so we're going to assume that our home country is a price taker on the world market. And our key claim is that if the government puts a quantity restriction on imports, so they restrict imports to a particular level, that that's going to have almost the same effect as a tax on imports or an import tariff. Let's see why. Let's start off by just reminding ourselves of what happens when we have free trade and when we add an import tariff. Well, remember with free trade, we have domestic demand, domestic supply, and we have the world price PW. Given that world price, domestic consumers wish to buy QD units, domestic producers wish to sell QS units, and the difference between QD and QS, this difference here, is the level of imports that we have under free trade. Now, what happens if the government puts a per unit import tax in place? The tax will be of level capital T. That's going to push up the price of imports, as seen by domestic buyers, up to PW plus T. They pay PW to the rest of the world, but they now pay a tax of T to their own government when they import a good. So given that new higher price, domestic consumers wish to buy QTD units. What about domestic producers? Well, they also can sell their product at this higher price. Why? Imagine they didn't. Imagine that domestic producers still sold their product at, say, this lower price, the blue price given here. Well, notice that because that price is below the price that buyers can buy imports at, all the buyers will want to buy domestic. How much will they want to buy? Well, given that price, they'd want to buy the quantity in there. Let's call that Q bar. How much would domestic sellers want to sell? Well, they'd want to sell the quantity given by the supply curve. Let's call that QS bar, that's the quantity there. Notice that Q bar is greater than QS bar. There's a gap in here. That gap isn't filled by imports because the price is below the price that we pay for imports. So this is simply excess demand. What happens when there's excess demand? Well, the excess demand is going to force the price to start rising. Where is that going to stop? When the domestic sellers also receive the tariff distorted world price PW plus T. So with the tariff in place, domestic consumers buy QTD and domestic producers sell QTS. They also get the higher price. Notice that there's a gap between QTD and QTS. That gap is filled by imports at the tariff distorted world price. So what does the tariff do? Well, it reduces the level of imports. Of course, it also creates some revenue for the government, which is simply the size of a tax or the size of a tariff times the quantity of imports, that rectangle there. How do we analyse a quota? Well, let's start with a really specific quota. Notice that with the tariff, this blue arrow is the level of our imports. What would happen if instead of putting a tax or a tariff on imports, we simply restricted imports to this level, the size of this blue arrow, or the difference between QTD and QTS? So we made it illegal for people to import any more than this quantity of imported products. Well, let's ask what 
that would do to our supply curve as seen by domestic consumers. Notice that if a price is below the world price, if a price is, say, down here, then we still just get domestic supply. Nobody from the rest of the world will sell us the product at a price less than PW. But what happens if a price rose up to be exactly equal to PW? Well, now we can buy as much as we like from the re Oh, hang on. The government's going to stop us from buying as much as we like. The government's only going to allow us to buy this level given by the blue arrow. So when the price gets up to PW, the supply curve for domestic consumers goes horizontal, but only until we use up all the quota. What happens if we use up all the quota and the price goes higher? Well, because we're not allowed to import anymore, we just go back to following the domestic supply curve. So our new supply curve, as seen by domestic consumers, is simply our domestic supply curve shifted to the right by the legal amount of imports at the world price PW. Given this new supply curve, where are we going to have equilibrium? Or equilibrium will be where the new quota adjusted supply curve intersects domestic demand. But that is just QTD. Why? Well, let's remember how we designed our quota. We designed our quota so that the level of imports was just exactly the same as the level of imports when we had the tariff distorted price PW plus T. So because we know that the gap in here is exactly the blue arrow, and the gap here is exactly the blue arrow, we know that this must be the same point. So consumers are going to buy QTD, the domestic price with the quota is going to be PW plus T. How much are domestic firms going to sell? Well, they're going to sell the domestic demand less the quota, but again, by design, that's just QTS. So notice that we get exactly the same outcome in terms of price and quantity with the tariff or with what we call the tariff equivalent quota, where we restrict the quantity rather than restricting the price. Because the quota has the same effect on prices and quantities as the tariff, we know that the quota will have exactly the same effect on consumer and producer surplus as does the tariff. So we know that the quota will lead to a reduction in consumer surplus, which is simply given by the orange shaded area here. And it will lead to a rise in producer surplus given by the green shaded area here. But what about the area of government revenue? That's the area we've shaded in blue here. That was government revenue under the tariff. What does that area represent under a quota? Well, the answer is it depends. The government might sell the right to import the restricted amount of product. It could sell the quota license. Now, if the government did that, that means that this blue area down here becomes revenue for the government. That rectangle is the maximum amount that anyone would be willing to pay for the import license. Why? Well, remember, the import license will allow you to sell the difference between QTD and QTS, the same as the blue arrow. It will allow you to sell it at the domestic equilibrium price, PW plus T, but you can buy that product from overseas at a price of PW, so the profit that you make from that import license is the quantity of imports you're allowed to bring into the country times the amount of profit that you make, the difference between the domestic price and the world price. So that blue rectangle becomes profit for whoever owns, whoever controls the license to import the quota. So if the government simply sells the quota license, it will be able to sell it for this rectangle. So if the government sells the quota license, then the blue area is simply government revenue, exactly the same as under the tariff, and we have two areas of deadweight loss, which are given by the pink-shaded triangles here. 
It's identical to a tariff in that situation. Alternatively, suppose that the government gives away the quota licence. Why might it do that? Well, it might want to reward its supporters or its friends or people that have donated to the party and helped it win government. In that situation, the government is effectively giving away a licence that has a value of that blue rectangle. The value of the blue rectangle is the profit per unit times the number of units you can import. So if a government gives the quota licence away, that blue area simply becomes a gift to whoever gets the licence. They get that money, and under our dollar is a dollar assumption, that blue rectangle is still part of social surplus. So our deadweight loss triangles are exactly the pink areas. They're unchanged. So the only change if a government gives away the licence is that the government doesn't get the money, the friends of the government get the money. It may be corrupt, but from an economic perspective, there's no extra deadweight loss. Another possibility is that the government could ask the overseas exporters to voluntarily restrict their exports. In other words, rather than saying to people domestically, you can't import more than the level of the blue arrow, it will ask a foreign government, please do not let your companies export more than the blue arrow to us. What's the effect there? Well, it depends how the foreign country allocates the export licence. It could auction it off, and if it did so, it would be able to get the size of that blue rectangle as its revenue. It would become revenue for the foreign government. Alternatively, the foreign government might give away the export licence to its friends, and if it did so, its friends would get that blue rectangle. Whatever it is, that blue rectangle will not go to the domestic country. So from the domestic country's perspective, not only does it lose our standard deadweight loss triangles, it loses all the government revenue. So from the domestic country's perspective, this entire pink area is now deadweight loss. Some of it is transferred overseas, what used to be the old government revenue, and some of it is standard deadweight loss. Why would a government ever do that? Well, there may be political reasons for it. And in fact, the United States in the early 1990s used exactly this policy to try and restrict imports from Japan. Rather than put a quota or a tariff on Japanese imports, the United States government argued to the Japanese government that they should voluntarily restrict exports. They threatened that if they didn't, then the United States government would use a tariff or a quota to restrict imports itself. Of course, the Japanese government said, right-o, we'll take the money instead of you, and they voluntarily restricted their exports to the United States. The Japanese obviously won, compared to if the United States had kept the money itself. Finally, the government might allocate the quota using a race, or a first-in, first-served principle. What will that do? Well, remember that if you win that race, you get to keep this blue rectangle here. That's the amount of revenue or profit you can make from having the quota licence. But how much are you then willing to spend to try and win that licence? Well, you're willing to spend up to the blue rectangle. And when governments have allocated quotas using a first-come, first-served basis or a race, that's exactly what has happened. Companies have fought each other to get the quota licence, for example, being first in the queue, wasting resources, for example, having ships sitting off the coast for months waiting to deliver product when the gates open. They've wasted all the resources associated with this blue rectangle. And so what happens if a government allocates a quota using a race? Well, again, the government revenue becomes part of deadweight loss, and the pink area here is the entire deadweight loss for the country. Notice, however, the difference between this and the voluntary export restriction is that the rectangle of revenue doesn't even go to the foreign government now. It just gets wasted. 
it just gets spent as people try and win the race. In summary, what happens when the government puts on a quota or a quantity restriction on imports rather than a tariff? Well, from the perspective of consumers and producers, the quota has the same effect as a tariff. The change in consumer surplus and the change in producer surplus is the same. The big question is what happens to the government's revenue? Under a tariff, the government gets the tariff revenue. Under a quota, the government may get that revenue. It may go to the government's friends, or the revenue may go overseas, or it may even be wasted. And if it gets wasted, it's obviously part of deadweight loss. So the deadweight loss in that case can be much bigger. The question for a quota and for deadweight loss compared to a tariff is, how does the government allocate the quota licence? Thanks for listening.